So I feel like I'm really excited about this one because I feel like we just talk about this between all, like internally all the time. And so I feel like it'll be good for us to um, talk about it. But basically what we're going to share about today is our strategy to scale and then like how to get your team to help you make more money, which I feel like sounds obvious, but so many entrepreneurs, I think like, aren't thinking about it that way. It's almost like those feel like separate things. Like I'm supposed to hire a team, then I have to be making more money to support the team. And it's like, well, really the team should be supporting me to make more. Right. Mm -hmm. Totally. I feel like it's, it's one of those things where it's like, we almost forget that, um, having a team is an investment, right? Yep. And that we do want to see that continue to grow the business. Yep. Hi, Michelle. If you're here, say hi, guys. And of course, remember, Megan loves to answer um, your specific questions. So <laughs> she loves the question. If you guys have any as we're going through this, let us know. But yeah, I got, exactly. Totally an investment. Totally should be something that's bringing more into the business. Hi, Harsha. Thank you for being here. Um, okay, so... The first thing, and this one is obvious, but let's just say it, <laughs> which is um, you have to know what actually works and nail your strategy first, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, hi, guys. Hi, Allie. Hi, Patricia. Oh, fun, fun. I love this. Okay. Um, so you have to know your strategy first and what works, and then you have to pass that down to team. So often, and I think this is such a frustration point for both the business owner and the team members is I see so many entrepreneurs that hire the team thinking that the team should bring in the strategy and then get really frustrated by that. And so it's really your job to know like what works in your business, what makes you money, what gets you clients, and then helping your team know that like my team knows like what works really well in my business is when we make relationships and build connections. And um, when I put out content and things like that, like that's what gets us clients. So team knows it's like their job to help us do more of that to get clients. But like it takes you knowing what strategy actually works for you to make money in your business um, and then really relaying that to team instead of feeling like, well, I don't really know how I'm doing it in my business and now I'm going to hire a team. Like that just is kind of a shit show, right? Mm. Totally. And I think that like, sometimes it can almost like create a little bit of a weird relationship. If you're like hiring somebody to help you, um, with something and you're like, okay, cool. Tell me what we should be doing. Like a team member is going to be like, but that, what what's your you job? Tell me <laughs> what I should be doing. Right. What? And, and I think that it's like, it comes down to like, you're going to always know your business better than anyone else. And you're always going to be the primary decision maker on everything. And so I think that like knowing what your strategy is, knowing what works, and then being able to communicate that to your team so that they can help you execute on that and maybe do things like do elements of it that, you know, are, are improving that process. But like the, the strategy behind it really needs to be um, clear and solidified first. Right. Yeah. And like, I think even checking in on that intention of hiring a team, because what you just said is really important. You are always going to be the primary decision maker in your business as the C mm -hmm. CEO. And so you have to come at it from that place. If you are like secretly kind of hiring team, cause you think, Oh God, it'll be so great not to have to make these decisions or whatever, like you're kind of missing the point, like hire a coach at that point. If you don't know your strategy, like get coaching, get mentorship, get support, do not put that on your team. Right. Mm. Totally. So, okay. Next thing. So obviously nail your strategy first. So next thing that we really like to focus on is focus on team, helping you with money making activities or freeing up your time. So you can do money making activities it has to be that where so many people go wrong here is they hire a team and then they kind of put team on random projects like that they've had in the back of their mind, right? Like, oh, I really needed this page on my website updated and I really should be organizing this better and I really should be doing that. And so you almost get in this habit of like, I have a thought of something that we should be doing and then I'm throwing that to team. And it's fine, except then you're not really saving time because you weren't doing that shit anyway. And it's probably not a money-making activity. It's more like organization or a website update or things like that. And then what happens is you still feel just as busy. They're not helping you make more money and the investment isn't working out, right? Mm. 
<laughs> Brittany says, I've done this giving random unimportant tasks. Well, me too. <laughs> me too. That's how I, that's how I know this because I have been there. <laughs> well, and I think it's something too, where it's like, especially at the beginning, I think sometimes it can be like tempting to be like, oh, I have this really long list of things that like, I just haven't gotten a chance to get to. And so I'm just going to like delegate all of these things, but it's like, that should be almost like your backup list. Like if, you have a retainer with team and they're, they have extra time or something like that. Cool. Let's go to that list of things. Once our core tasks have been, and our core hours are being used, we're like that really, the primary like focus should really be on like marketing or sales or something like you said, or like clearing up your time so that you can focus on those things. I'm laughing so hard. Ali says, I feel personally attacked by this conversation. <laughs> it's so funny. I feel like everyone's I feel like we've like, all been there. I know, right? Yeah. Like, not it. I totally, especially because it's so tempting. Like it is so yeah. tempting when you feel like, oh, I finally have team support and I have all these like outstanding random things in my mind. That's the first thing we tend to go to, but it really, really has to be on something that makes you money, right? Brittany says, I've needed to update my website copy forever, but I've been busy serving clients. Does an outdated website really matter? Brittany, what I would say to that is that it's more like, is that the number one place your clients are converting? So for me, as an example, a lot of my clients like will like self-admittedly tell me they've never even read my sales page. <laughs> Bitches. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, they'll, they'll literally say like, oh, I've never even read that. So for me, that's last on the list. A lot of the time, like it took us almost, I mean, fuck, I don't know how long, Megan, months and months to yeah. complete um, that because I just kept deprioritizing it because I knew that wasn't the number one money making activity. Um, so it's okay if you have to keep deprioritizing something, even if you'd like to get it done, but it depends. Like some of my clients, like they're getting a lot of cold traffic that goes right to a sales page. And it really, really, really matters how well their website is converting. And so that would be a money-making activity that we would prioritize. So it just kind of depends on where that is for you in your business. But if that's, you know, really the conversion opportunity, yes, let's get on that. Like, how do we get used to the support for that? And if like me, it really wasn't like that big of a thing for you. Like it might just get deprioritized for literally months and that's okay. Hi, Ash. She says, Oh Jesus, perfect timing for this. I think you're going to like this one. Um, <laughs> okay. So focus on team, helping you with money-making activities or free up your time. So for me, and just so we'll tell you guys how it looks in, in my business, right, is the way I make money is one-on-one -on -one clients. So my freeing up my time is our primary focus, right? Team is always thinking, Megan is always thinking about like, how do we get that off your plate? How do we save you time here? How do we make that more efficient? Like she is always running it through that lens. <laughs> I've like literally made you send me your calendar to send me a detailed list of how you spend all of your time. How do you spend because your time? like, how do we, how do we clear that up? Is there anything that like I can take over that team can take over? How do we like, because that's really like the, the top priority. Totally. Michelle says I'm that person that reads the sales page, but for fun. <laughs> yes, totally. <laughs> I actually like reading sales pages too, personally. <laughs> um, yeah. But so Megan is like, like she knows that's the team contribution. Um, so for us, like that's always the focus where for some of my clients, it's almost totally could be the opposite potentially, right. Where, um, like where they make more money is getting more people into a program. So team is constantly focused on the marketing aspect of it. They're less going to be like, Hey, let me look at your calendar. And they're more going to be like, Hey, let's really look at the marketing plan. Like what's going on with that? Like, how can we better support you here? How can we help you, you know, grow the list or promote more or whatever. But it's like, do you know what your number one thing is to make money in your business? And then does your team know that? And are they acting in alignment with that, which goes back to the number one thing, which is like, you got to know your strategy. 
Number two thing is you got to know, like, do they need to free up your time for money making activities? And here's the other thing. Everyone's going to hate this. But what most people do when they delegate to team is then they don't use that time to do money making activities. Like, so if Megan saves you 10 hours a week, are you spending 10 hours a week on money making activities? So like team frees up my time. So not only can I serve one on one clients, but so I can be on lives like this. So I can do, um, you know, two podcasts a week, all that kind of stuff. Right. But like, you have to use it for that. Like, it's so tempting to be like, oh, I have more free time this week. Like, again, let me dive into this project I've been meaning to complete where I organize all my content or whatever. Right. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, go ahead, Megan. Sorry. And then I'll read the comments. No, go ahead. Um, Patricia loves this. Thank you, Patricia. Um, Brittany says, burning queue. Can you outsource audience building activities to your team? And if so, what kind of things could they do? This is where I struggle. So Brittany, what I would say to that is like, do you know what tends to build your audience? So like, again, for us, I'll use the example of, um, it's definitely posting in other Facebook groups. It's getting me, um, other places, like maybe going on podcasts or something like that. So my team can help with all of that. They can post my content other places. They can pitch me to mm. other podcasts. They can make sure that, um, you know, promos going out in other places for our podcast. Um, what else, Megan? Um, like even just like Instagram and stuff, like are we yeah. engaging on like other people and trying to like grow following? Are we engaging with other people's yeah. content and stuff like that? I think that yeah. en engagement is, is a big piece of it too. And like, yeah. um, just, yeah, I think that those are the primary things like social media, um, in, in, on both Facebook and Instagram for us. And then a little bit of like PR pitching to podcasts and stuff like that yeah. too. And then obviously like, if you have an ads person on your team, Brittany, that's like yeah. a whole other thing. Of course, they're going to grow your audience in that way. But like, again, totally possible to be like, Hey team, I really need you to focus on making sure my content is going out in multiple places and pitching five podcasts a week, because that's what is going to make us more money and help us grow. And then they can get on that. Right. Yeah. Michelle says, do you feel like these team strategies change in different seasons? Like if you're filling one-on-one -on -one and have lots of time versus not as much time because you're one-on-one -on -one as well. 1000%. Um, I mean, we still do a lot of the same like basics, but I would say we definitely are just conscious of it in a different way, which I'll actually kind of get to that because I think that's a good point. Go ahead, Megan. I was just going to say, like, I think it just kind of depends too on like what we have going on. So for example, like yeah. um, last year, we had actually like, we had a bit of like a low, where like we didn't have any extra projects. We didn't have any like list building activities going on. We didn't have any like launches going on. And so we basically said like, okay, cool. We're going to start the website this month. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that was like the focus. And then I'm pretty sure that's when COVID <laughs> shut everything down. So we're like, okay, so not the website, we're going to shift gears here. But I think so like, it definitely does kind of depend too on um, just kind of like where your business is, like you, you're going to have different seasons in business. And so I think that with that, also team focus and team priorities start to shift too. hundred percent. And I have another point I want to make about that shortly, Michelle, but yes, like it definitely changes. <laughs> Ash said, bingo. I'm like, woo, that's done. Let me rest or do something that doesn't make me money. Exactly. <laughs> that is the temptation though. And it's so helpful to say that, but I really try to think about that myself where I'm like, if I'm giving team, whatever, 10 extra hours this week, am I spending the extra time I have doing something that makes the business money? Because if not, I'm literally just wasting money twice. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, and listen, I'm not saying like, Oh my God, work your buns off. Like obviously Megan's business is called white space because it's like part of it is like having time to like breathe and have white space as a business owner, but it definitely is not using it just to, um, do other things. It's literally being like, I have the time now to go make more kind of right. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. So yeah. So let's talk about priorities. Cause I think that's another thing of how your team can help you scale. So, um, and this is actually, you know, another one that 
would relate to what Michelle was asking too, but so like you have to really know the priorities to share with your team. And those probably are going to change based on the season, like Michelle said. So like right now, for example, y'all know I've been full for a really long time in one-on-one. -on -one. And so one thing that I have to be really careful of is not just assigning random ass projects um, to team, even if it would like feel good to get some of those done um, because we have to watch margins too, right? So like I am full, like I can't take on more clients. Like we're scaling as it relates to client income, but not as it relates to taking on more clients, right? And so if I just keep adding more and more projects, then the margin starts to shrink without the opportunity to build it up necessarily, except through client revenue share, right? Which is great. It's just not related, right? So Megan's really good because she knows that about when I kind of get like this, like, you know, thing under me where I'm like, oh, you know, it'd be great if we did this. Megan's like, yeah, but does that make sense based on the fact that like, you can't really take on any more clients right now. And I'm like, no, it fucking doesn't actually. Thank you for saying that. Um, so, you know, keeping profit margin in mind is really helpful too. But like, if I knew team could do something next week, that would like drastically increase profit. Like for example, we did the million her forum, right? Um, that's going to increase profit in the business. And so I'm happy to spend whatever team hours are going to take on that because I know the margin makes sense there, right? I think it's just like being super clear about like, what is the actual end goal here? Like, what yeah. is the, the purpose of team working on this project? It, and how is this going to, how is this going to end up being a return on the investment? How is this going to grow the business? It might not be like a super, um, like immediate effect, right? Like it might not be like we work on a million her forum and then we sell it. And so we can see that like return on the investment right away, but it might be something where, I don't know, I <laughs> didn't come up with an example before I started talking, but like <laughs> it might be something where like you start doing, like have teamwork on a project that then is something that like, you're not going to see that return for like several months or something, but it might, like, it might be just like, I don't know, like even just like starting like list building types of stuff or something right. like that, where like, it's going to take time for that to pay off. But there is a very specific purpose for that, where you are going to be able to say like, cool, I know that like there, like that was connected with the growth of the business. I'll just give you an example of that. It really was the website project for us. So when we were doing the website stuff, it really wasn't about like sales page or anything like that. It was that we know when people consume my content really consistently that they then want to work with me. And so the whole point of redoing the website was making content consumption and learning through the website significantly easier. And obviously that's going to be a longer payoff. It took the whole time of doing the website and designing it to be really accessible and easy to consume everything on. And then it's obviously going to take getting it out there and then having people actually go through that and consume the content. So it was definitely like a long game, but it was so related to not just like, it would be great if we updated the website and made it prettier. It was very intentional with being like, what we know makes us money in this business. What we know gets people on a wait list is this, like, really consistent content consumption. How do we design a website that helps us do that? And so then all the investments feel like they make sense, even if they're far out, right? Where it like makes sense to invest in team doing that. It makes sense to invest in um, the build of that and all that kind of stuff. So again, it's just too easy to get invested in some of those like little projects that feel like, oh, wouldn't it be fun if we redid the website? Or wouldn't it be cool if my branding got um, a facelift? But it's like, for why, for what do we know the intention? And then you can communicate that. Like if I just was like, oh, I'm going to read you the website. Like Megan wouldn't have known that I was thinking about it through the lens of, because I want it to be, you know, this much easier to consume da da da. But because she knew that she was able to approach the whole project through that lens. Right. Mm -hmm. And it helps a lot too, because then I can understand the, like how important that is right. mm -hmm. and how urgent that is. So I think that it's like, I mean, that's like prioritization, right? But I think that like, it really is up to you as the business owner to really help your team 
know the priorities and know what, um, you know, what can be like, what needs to be bumped immediately to the top versus what can kind of like permission to, for this to take several months and for it to take longer because it's not like something that we immediately need to update or, you know, change right away. Totally. And so permission here, and this is really important for scaling to revise your priorities often. Like mm -hmm. I feel like people almost get themselves stuck in that because they've given team like one priority and then it shifts and they feel weird changing it. But like we revise our priorities quite a lot and revisit them quite a bit. Um, Megan's really good at being like, hey, this, this, and this are what I think you want us to have as priorities right now. Is this still true? Um, and, and again, that's changed a lot with the seasons of our business. Like we've had a very different year this year in terms of priorities having been full than we would have like in past years in terms of that too. So um, you know, just really making sure that you're okay with revising it and, and really feeling like, you know, that what they're working on is like a, yes, that I can directly tie that to a result, even if the timeline is longer, um, versus like where we get stuck sometimes with scaling is, and this is so funny because it's true when you're at a point to scale, you're making enough money that you can spend on shit. But the problem is you're making enough money that you can spend on shit, <laughs> right? But you have to be so diligent um, about still being like, yeah, that's a nice to have and it would be cool. And technically the business can like afford it. But is that priority actually in alignment with what's going to get us to the next level with what's going to make us more money? All of those kind of things. There's just always going to be like a hundred nice to haves that your team could be doing, but like really being clear on that. So that kind of takes me to the next point, which is like, do you know what your, like your thing is to scale, right? So like know what actually allows you to scale. It's not going to be 500 things. <laughs> it's probably going to be doing one to three things really, really well, or doubling down on like one to three core streams of income in your business. Um, and so again, like the problem when you're at that point is like, you have the money to be like, Hey, do this. Hey, do that. Hey, do that. But like how you scale is you say no to a lot of other shit <laughs> and you focus on like a couple things, right? Totally. And I think that like, I mean, we, I feel like we are constantly kind of adding to our someday list or like, we'll circle back to this list. Yep. And a lot of times, like the, the way that you can tell something is like a good idea or not like a good idea, but like something that you definitely want to pursue is like, if some, if it gets bumped up to the top of the priority list, there are things that like were a nice to have that we might've put on to okay, but this doesn't, it's not immediately connected to like how we're scaling. So we're just going to shelf this idea. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, three months later, we're like, oh, well, we're just not going to do like, that doesn't actually make sense. We can even just remove that. And so it's almost good that you didn't just like, run like have it. team just like run at it yep. and mm -hmm. then not actually use it or not actually like um, have like need that for anything. Right. Totally. And from the team perspective, your team wants to work on things that are going to grow your business. They don't want to just do these random things that they start and then only half finish. And I, and I feel like everyone makes the case of like, well, they're getting paid regardless. And it's like, right. But like most people want to feel like they're doing something that really matters. I mean, it's never like, it, it's not about the money, right? We're like totally. anyone who has ever had a job that like, they felt like they contributed to it. It's like that money was different than the job that you just like showed up and it didn't matter what you did. And like, you were just a body and, you know, a body there basically. Exactly. Right. And I think that it's like, it's the same with your team. Like they want to be feeling like what they do matters that they're contributing to, to something. Right. And, and really, um, feel like their work is useful and that, you know, they can kind of see how it is growing the business because also like as the business grows, your team will grow with you too. Yep. Yep. And mm -hmm. so I think that like there, 
the more that you kind of like make that connection with them and like bring them into that, like the more that they're also invested in the growth of the business as well. A hundred percent. So for, for us again, like know your thing to scale. So for us, it's, it really is one-on-one and the way we scale it is with revenue share. And so again, it's back to the time thing. Like we're doubled down on that. Like everyone is focused on like, how do we save Lacey time so she can, you know, do the one, take on one-on-one clients, but then also like be a really good coach to those clients so that they scale through the revenue share model. Right. And so it's just so clear what our scalability plan is there that every decision in the business gets filtered through that. Like that is the first, like anytime I bring something to Megan, the first thing she's thinking about is what of your time does that take? And we're just always processing it through that lens. Um, again, that's ours. Like if a client had her scalability model was this course, like we're really trying to scale, um, a course. What I would be saying is like, do your, does your team understand like that this is our scaling plan? Like we're doubling down on this, like what can they help you do to do that? Right. So we're getting team to do so many things like, Hey, can you do, um, go outreach to everyone that's done this course and get really amazing testimonials. Can we make sure you're sharing those testimonials really consistently? You know, whatever on stories in this way, can team make sure like all of your marketing is set up? Like it would just be like, does everyone get that this course is our bread and butter and that everything we can do to get more people through this course and excited and to give people an amazing experience while they're in the course is the thing. If they get that, it's so much easier and they will make such better decisions in your business because everything will be filtered through the lens of, does that help us sell this course? Mm. Right? Mm. Totally. Yeah. Uh, Michelle says, love that reminder, Megan, about your team wanting to be doing something useful and helpful. I actually just asked my VA today to check in and make sure I've been communicating that well. Oh, I love that, Michelle. I'm sure she probably really appreciated that too. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. Um, so yeah, so you have to know like what your plan is. I really feel like the biggest frustrations with team and with scaling come in when you don't fully know the strategy for scaling or you're not fully aligning team tasks to that. Right. So if you don't fully know the strategy, you got to get yourself support. Like, do you have a coach? Are you getting mentorship? Are you figuring strategy out? Are you coming to million her strategy for him? Hey, hey. Um, but seriously, like you, like do not try to get team to help you do something when you aren't clear what the strategy is to do it. But then if you know the strategy, are you communicating that and making sure every single task that team does is aligned to that vision? Or are you just kind of throwing them random stuff as you think about it? And you're over here trying to work on the vision. You both are going to feel so fucking frustrated if that's what's happening. Right. Mm. Totally. And I think that like, it also creates a disconnect too, right? It almost Mm. feels like you're not working together to grow the business, right? You're almost like giving team side projects that like almost don't have as much significant. And then you're putting everything into whatever it is. And so I think like it also, when you bring your team into like, um, like knowing what the strategy is, knowing how, what they are doing is connected to that and why it's important. They are going to become just like more invested in the business, in you and helping you. And I also think that like, that's what really allows your team members to like have a better understanding of the business as a whole. And then they can bring ideas to you of like, Hey, have you ever thought about this? Like, I noticed that, you know, I don't know, like with the like course example, like if scaling through a course is the primary, you know, way that you're scaling, maybe they have some other idea, especially because they probably have worked with other clients. They probably have seen other things. They've probably, you know, they're exposed to different things than you are. And so maybe they could bring ideas and that's not necessarily like to be confused with like relying on them to be like, be informing the strategy. But I do think that it's helpful to, you know, have them be able to bring ideas so that um, they can also kind of like just help uh, 
be invested in moving, you know what I mean? Like, like moving that business forward. Exactly. And again, it's so reliant on, is it clear where the business is going? And that's on you as the leader, right? Um, I'm sure I've shared this on here like a million times, but one of my favorite leadership quotes is by Theodore Hesburgh. And he talks about how you can't blow an uncertain trumpet. Mm -hmm. And that's what we do sometimes is we're blowing such an uncertain trumpet to team where it's like, well, we need to fill this course, but we also need to get this done and we need to figure this out. And I have this project I want us to do. And I have that and teams like, oh, okay. Um, Really like a lot going on there. We'll try to do our best, but then you're never, just like if you split into a hundred strategies, you're not gonna see a ton of success with any of them. Same with team, if they're split across 10 projects, each one's going to kind of move pretty slow and you're not going to feel like you're really nailing it. Um, but if you fully know, like, this is my strategy to scale and I feel very committed to that, then you blow that trumpet to them and they know like everyone is moving in the same direction. And this is what is required and why I talk so much about stacking strategies and not shifting them all the time. Because as you get further along in your business, if you have a team and you're shifting strategy, it's hard enough shifting strategies when it's just you. It's fucking crazy making to have a team and be shifting strategies all the time because you're also just lighting money on fire. <laughs> you're literally just taking money and lighting it on fire. Megan, may we talk about that, like being the team member when someone's shifting a lot? Mm. Yeah. I mean, I think it's also just like, it's frustrating because I think that like, if something shifts too much, I mean, I think there's always some shifts in business shifts during different seasons and stuff like that. But I think that the difference is more around like priorities versus like entire, like your entire shifting your strategy or something like that. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that like, um, it can feel just, especially if you're not like, um, giving something time to play out or if you're, you know, like you, you almost, okay. So here, let me say this is that one of the ways that you're going to make money with your team and your team is going to make you money as you scale is when you are repeating the same things, when you are just building on the foundations that you've already built. And the more that you can do that rather than shift around and and change everything up all the time, like your team's going to get to a place where like things are just on rinse and repeat. Right. And so we might tweak things. We might add on, we might, you know, do certain things slightly differently, but you're just building on something that you're already having foundation for. And so they're just getting better and better and better. They're getting faster and faster at it, you know? And so I think that that's what really allows you to scale because you can start to like add on. um, And like you say, like stack things on top rather than feeling like, okay, we're brand new thing. We're learning how to do this. And then as soon as we kind of start to get the hang of it, we're switching to something else. Then you have to start all over again. And it can feel really like um, discouraging as a team member too. Cause it's like, oh, I just have like, now I have to learn yeah. something brand new and stuff. So totally. I love that. Um, Michelle says, hi, Shari. Michelle says, there are definitely days when I feel like I'm blowing that trumpet, but coming back to center has been really helpful as is our combo at the last million her firm. I'm so glad that helped, Michelle. Thank you. Um, Shari, so sorry if you already shared this, but wondering, did you already share your strategy for scaling? Was it to open up more capacity for you to do one-on-one? Yep, totally. So basically team knows for us, it's my time. So obviously we scale through one-on-one and we scale through revenue share. So whether it's opening up my time to be able to take on a one-on-one client or opening up my time to be able to better serve the one-on-one clients I have so that they have the, you know, revenue growth. So that's what our team does to scale. And that's what we always focus on. Like we were talking about how Megan's always like, what is on your plate? Let me see your calendar. We have like a spreadsheet of where my time is going. Like it's a whole thing basically because our team knows that that scales us, right? Again, most business owners don't have the same model I do. So that's going to be different for other people, but like, you know, maybe you don't have a time spreadsheet. Maybe you have like a spreadsheet of like, who's been joining your program and what that looks like. And you know, how, what, where enrollment's at. So team can see all of that. Um, 
one of my clients is like amazing with um, uh, building dashboards and uh, creating data. And she literally built a dashboard for her team to be able to see like, what are our metrics and our results so that they can be more invested um, in that process. Uh, Michelle says, dude, that shifting strategies thing is real. And what my nine to five is constantly doing, it's really frustrating as a team member, right? hundred percent. And you're like, where it just feels like you're running in quicksand all the time, right? Probably because they keep changing their mind. And so same thing here. It's almost like, I, I really think about it. Like this is sort of cheesy, but it's true. Like just through a lens of like servant leadership, right? That's always the type of leadership um, philosophy that I've like been most drawn to and that I really think. And it's like, I need to be serving my team by making it really easy for them to win, by making our priorities really clear, by making sure that I'm not bouncing around all the time. Um, and so even if it's not for myself, thinking about doing it for a team and for them, like thinking about like doing it so Megan doesn't have like a total shit ass month because I'm changing <laughs> my mind every two seconds. And again, not that you can never change your mind as a business owner, but there is a big difference between like, I'm just swinging around here because I haven't fully committed to something versus like, Hey, we're making these really intentional pivots and tweaks based on what makes sense. Again, we change priorities a lot, but we don't change strategies. Um, so that's really useful. It's like, can you think about it? Like, I'm not just doing it for me. I'm like doing it for the business. I'm doing it for the team so I can be a great leader to them. Right. Yeah, totally. Um, okay. Let me see if I have anything else on my list here. Um, oh, well, I think I kind of already talked about this, but I'll just say it again really quickly because I think it's helpful, but you know, we talk about, um, shiny object syndrome all the time as like new entrepreneurs and stuff. But I think, and this is worth saying, you see this with so many people is again, once you hit that like tipping point where like it's time to have multiple team members and it's time to really grow, your shiny object syndrome just fucking explodes because there are all these people that can help you do that. So it's what I was saying earlier about you have to be so disciplined on paying attention to what you're giving team and or have them reflect that back to you. Like I'll brain dump ideas to Megan all the time, but they're, it's very clear, like, Hey, these are some ideas. Let's talk through them. It's not like, let's do this project and this project. And then we'll come together to be like, do any of these even make sense? <laughs> and like Megan was saying earlier, a lot of them go on a some someday list and that's fine for now. Um, but if you get that shiny object intensity in the moment, like watch that. Like if you feel like team has to get on this right away, like it might be a shiny object syndrome and you need to <laughs> pay attention if you have that like ah kind of feeling around it versus like, can you say, hey, I have these three ideas. They can wait till we chat the next time we chat through them. We green light some of them. We park some of the other ones, like getting into that kind of space where like having more help doesn't make you more reactive and more in shiny object because it's so easy to go there. And that's what stops you from scaling. Like that's when you get stuck at that plateau where you're like, why am I spending so much money <laughs> and not actually growing? Right. Totally. And I think that that's where like connecting something with like, what is this doing for the business growth, yep. right? Like what, what is, is this freeing up my time? Is this bringing more, you know, Lean. people into yep. like whatever our program or like, is it growing our audience or whatever that is like knowing what the purpose of a new project or a new, whatever it is. Um, I think that that can be super helpful. Cause I think that that helps to identify like, am I just passing this because it's a cool thing or a cool idea, or is this actually going to help to, to grow the business and totally. serve what we're the way that we're scaling. And again, this is where like coaching and mentorship comes in. Like this is what so many of my clients use me for is we're figuring that stuff out together so that they can go to team blowing that certain trumpet. Like I said earlier, um, or they can come to me and we can help to look at like, what is the strategy? What are we committed to? Or when they want to like, you know, go off on a crazy tangent, they're going to bring that to me first. So I can be like, nope, remember we told team this. <laughs> and so we're going to just keep doing this. Um, so that's, that's where both come in. And I think that's really important for people to hear is like, 
that's why there's value in having both of those perspectives, because you certainly need someone to help you figure out the strategy and all of that, then you need to go to your team really certain. I feel like sometimes we like use our team too much to kind of be like, and then we could do these 52 things. Can you get them done this week? And they're like, um, so again, like that's where both pieces fit in. Yes, your team can drastically help you scale, but also so can coaching and mentoring to make sure you're making the right strategy decisions for that. Um, and not just going off the, off the rails there. Um, I think that's it. Anything else there, Megan? Yeah, no, I, I think that that's pretty much everything. I feel like it's one of those things where I feel like just knowing like your, like having that clarity and the certainty on your end first is just so helpful because like team, I mean, basically like your team is there to help you execute something, right? Like Uh that's their, their, you know, whole jig, (laughs) like that's what they do. And so they're probably, I mean, like I do this, but I don't use me an example, but like your team is not necessarily going to be like, okay, but wait, is that actually going to be the, the right strategy here? Should we actually be doing this project or something like you're coming to them with that certainty first, right? And the only reason Megan even can do that is because she's certain of what direction we're going. Like I still have to set that or she wouldn't be giving that reflection, right? Mm. Totally. So good. Um, Shari says, yes, servant leadership is my fave. Me too, Michelle says, same. Um, Shari says, I made my clients create a someday home, aka a Google Doc for new ideas that they get during a launch for exactly this reason. A hundred percent, you got to have a parking lot. <laughs> um, <laughs> Patricia says, I have a rinse and repeat strategy. My one-on-one just need to free up my time so I can open more one-on-one coaching spots, keep growing my other business and be more present with my children being homeschooled, right? I have another, I have hired another VA, but it seems that I do not have the right type of hire. How can I prove in this area as I'm open to bringing in a team member? Patricia, the first thing I would say to you there is you have to figure out what are you doing that's not just serving your one-on-one clients, (laughs) right? Like there are probably all these sneaky little things that you're finding yourself doing that someone else could be doing to free up your time. So I'm just always running that through my head. Can, like the, t- the thing I ask myself when I'm doing a task in my business is, can anyone else do this besides me? Um, and pretty much the answer is yes to everything, except for like being on a live stream like this and being one to face to face with a client. And so I would really look at that for you. Like, as I'm sure there's tasks that, um, you're doing, and then who is the right team member to take those tasks off your plate because time is going to be your scalability there, like you're saying, right? So you need to figure out where is that going? Who can do that? But besides you, and then how are we hiring for that? Um, Okay. Shari says that's so true. I really like using coaching for getting my own clarity around team. I definitely went through what you described around trying to brainstorm everything with team. And it was very confusing and frustrating for all of us. Yeah. (laughs) Megan's been there. (laughs) It's so true. And I think it's so helpful too, because, um, like that almost like freaks them out about their job sometimes I think because when you're just brainstorming a bunch of shit they're like oh my god am I gonna have to do all that like do I need to go learn new stuff to like right it can just be kind of like anxiety producing so I think that's so smart that's what that's what coaching is there for um okay so if you guys want strategy support come to millionaire strategy forum um I'm not going to teach you like any one strategy or anything like that. We're going to do the live coaching again. We're going to do questions and I'm going to really teach you how I think about strategy um, so that you can just apply it to anything in your business. Again, you've heard me go on and on about this, but I think that what the biggest problem so many of us have in the online space is we're told to go do a lot of strategies, but we don't understand how to actually think about them, how to run strategy through a thought process, all of that kind of stuff. So I'm going to give you basically the framework that I used to think about strategy, that I used to think about strategy in my clients' businesses to make decisions, all of that kind of stuff, so that you can process strategy before you go to team, (laughs) 
right? And then it gets so much easier. So I would love to have you all join me for that. Um, if you want to just join us for the strategy forum, you totally can just come to that one. It's $99. If you want to get the recording from the mindset one and join us for the execution, it's 247. So I'll drop the link, but I, a little life.com forward slash million her, right? Yeah. See, she's so good. <laughs> um, but we would love to have you there. I think that one's going to be really, really important. And I think it's going to help a lot if you're feeling like this, like if a lot of what we said today is really kind of hitting home and you're like, oh my God, I am really bouncing around a lot. Oh my gosh, I really am not sure what my strategy is. Come, it will help a ton. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Megan, I'm so grateful to you as always. This is so helpful. And I just think I say this to you every time, but like, I just think it's so helpful for people to hear it from the team perspective too, because I think that sometimes we just don't know like what that feels like to be on the other side. So I'm just so grateful to you. Totally. And I feel like it's just like helpful because a lot of it's like, oh, duh, that makes sense. But just hearing it from that other perspective mm -hmm. is so helpful. 100%. Happy to I love you. You're the best. Love you. Um, can I ask you one other thing though? Mm -hmm. Did you make a thing that we might want to tell people about? I did make a thing. So you guys, I have been, <laughs> what's the word? I feel like I always say this about getting you to do things, but it's like factually true. Begging, pleading, um, bribing, I don't know, all the things. Yeah. Um, Megan, to make this thing because it, frankly, I'm a selfish asshole and it will make my life infinitely easier because now all my clients can <laughs> get this thing. But tell them what the thing is, Megan. <laughs> so I just, so I, I create basically like templates uh, like of my systems um, and then do, do trainings on them. And so I just today released one on my uh, process for planning and launching a podcast. So um, basically I took um, Lacey's strategy of um, doing a, a launch team launch. when launching your podcast, um, paired that with like kind of all of the prepping and planning stuff that you have to do for the production side of things, plus a lot. Mm -hmm. is a lot, <laughs> plus the actual launch of the podcast um, and um, you know, inviting and starting and, and managing the podcast launch team and all of that. So I took all of the the templates and the documents and resources that I have created um, over the years and put them all into a a little framework. And um, it is on my website, uh, whitespace.team. You can do whitespace.team slash systems. Um, but go yeah. go to the full website. It's pretty. <laughs> I'm obsessed with your website. It's so um, it's uh, yeah, but it is so helpful. You guys, I, I do a little video training in it too, to just talk through, um, the format. So if you are launching a podcast, it's going to be really helpful to you. But even if you already have a podcast and you want to do a relaunch and kind of drum up some excitement around it, it's really relevant for that too. Um, but it is just like everything you need for it. And honestly, it's quite a complicated, not complicated. Let me say that. I don't, it's not a complicated strategy at all but there's just a lot of moving pieces that you have to get in place and so having the templates is such a, a game changer so um yay for megan yay. um it's gonna help so much so anyway if you have a podcast you need this thing megan's the best ever and i love you thank you thank you so much oh uh, patricia says i love you and i see it so good. I hope you, I feel like you could totally have a podcast, Patricia. Um, okay. Awesome. We love you guys. Megan will put the link below for that. And I hope you guys have a beautiful week. Thanks guys. Bye.